time and thing after that. Yeah, sorry. Just record in case I can put it on the on the on the YouTube channel. So no, not record that no, six hundred no. acre one. Golf uh, course six, we're uh, doing the drone with. Oh, the golf course one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was PGA up in Frisco, and uh, I think they're opening pretty soon. I saw like some video that had them doing like a, one of those Cine Whoop drones. That's not what we do, but I yeah. saw one of them. Uh, where it's like a video that they fly all the way through all the yeah. like I don't know yep. headquarters area. Yep. Hey Robert, thanks for joining us. This is more of a uh, you know, everybody that's joining in. It's just an open discussion. Um, everybody shares their input about drones and technology, and we could talk about other topics too. But uh, um, what drone are you currently using right now, Adam? I know you're you're you know if y'all don't know, Adam's in work for a survey company, so they do drone uh, survey. So yeah, I put on a company shirt. Just there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what are we doing here? The wife just ordered like this great Hawaiian takeout place too. So I was like, yeah. does he in my face right before the call? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and actually I was trying to do it on my laptop, but sadly the yeah. technology defeated me. So I was like, I know I can get it on my phone. So yeah. this is probably the most selfie I've ever done on a phone before. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what it is. Yeah. Uh, so now the uh, we fly the M three hundred, which is a DJI product. So that was on the uh, website right now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's the airframe, the thing that lifts it anyway. Yeah. And then the the sensor that we fly with it is called the uh, P one, or the Zen Zen Muse P one is the model number. And that's a it's a full frame camera, thirty five millimeter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't zoom or anything, which you don't really care to zoom when you're doing mapping stuff. Mm -hmm. There's other sensors for that uh, inspection. Are y'all using stuff. just one drone for all this, or you have another one for like a backup? Uh, well, we kind of have like we have like the old. We have a couple old P3s. We don't really use them. They just mm -hmm. kind of gather dust, uh, but they're good for people to try out when they're just like wanting to learn how to fly drones. Because yeah. if they crash them, who cares? It's P3. <laughs> um, and then the. Uh, we do have a P4 Phantom Pro still RTK, and that's still a workhorse. Um, mm -hmm. But generally, that's kind of retired for uh, really either small stuff or just we have too many jobs that day. And so the P4 has got to go out to do it. Uh, but usually we fly that M300 P1 for all the photogrammetry, mind you. Mm -hmm. um, the LiDAR is still done uh, with a micro drones. Uh, MD LiDAR 1000 HR mm -hmm. uh, is the model number for that. So it, basically, uh, Micro Drones is the integrator of it, and uh, it op the sensor is operated off of uh, essentially a Velodyne Puck yeah. 16. So that's the thing that sprays all the lasers. Yeah. The rest of it's just IMU and GPS is attached to uh, <clears throat> rotor blades, essentially. Yeah. Um, and you're currently using um, what software to handle that data You know, uh, when you bring it in? Uh, when photogrammetry, um, it's wild west, so you can do whatever you feel most comfortable with, yeah. Uh, to include tossing it off to a uh, drone service provider, yeah. And so it's whatever one you feel most comfortable dealing with. Uh, yeah. there is some QC to it, but once you have a good working relationship with them, it's not that big yeah. a deal. Y'all um, yeah, have a couple of software. I, mean, I know y'all were using what Pix4D. Y'all had some kind of right, other. Right, for sure. Symbol. When we roll our own, which is actually a majority of the time, just for no other reason than we can do it faster than, you know, if you dumped it out to a drone service provider, you got mm -hmm. at least a 24 hour turnaround, probably a three to five day turnaround. Yeah. And so, uh, in fact, recently, due to a scheduling slash communication snafu, uh, I had to go turn around a LiDAR flight from when they called for it to a delivered surface in six hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's as fast as I can go. Yeah. <laughs> and okay. I hope to not have to do it again. So how, but yeah. You know, these files are huge. How are they, how are they sharing that? You know, you're sharing that stuff back and forth. What, how are you sharing that with, you know, so uh, much data? Yeah. Oh, for sure. There's very, very few clients of ours that actually want the point cloud itself. Uh, mm -hmm. They just assume have all the, vectorized everything just the CAD yeah. final blow or well, like you like you're attempting to teach us to do better uh is that but uh for me I'm becoming a little too specialized I feel sometimes uh mm -hmm. but it is what it is yeah. is that most of the time for me uh the CAD final deliverable sometimes I'm the I'm the middleman to where mm -hmm. the engineer is going to do all the doctrine when it comes mm -hmm. to whatever his final drawing is going to look like or whatever yeah, yeah. 
I'm kind of supplying like a, a middle deliverable that they need a surface. So most or your, they need or they need a base file with contour lines. So yeah, would you say most of your work is really just to to get a, go out there and get topo? Would you say? Uh, for me, yes. Yeah. Um, although I, I thankfully, because <laughs> I do work at a survey company, one day I'll be a real survey boy. Uh, <laughs> Uh, is that I have been having to, they've been combining me, a bit of value add, might add, uh, into, you know, getting the boundary corners while I'm doing all the, uh, you know, drone stuff. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we can combine both. Uh, for us, most of the time, I kind of treat our um, internal department uh, very similar to a drone service provider. And the fact that if you're an RPLS or an engineer, or whoever you are, uh, by the time it gets to me, all I need is a KML or a KMZ. Yeah. You, know, you tell me your capture area in the form of a KML mm -hmm. or a KMZ, which is a polygon. You open up Google Earth and you make a polygon. Yeah. Save as KML, KMZ. Yeah. I'm off and running. That's all I need from you. I'll send it back to you. Yeah. Um, are y'all also doing um, uh, like residential subdivision pad verification that's yeah I, I, I see um, that's another ma major benefit you know i'm not a there dude. is uh sometimes we get these gigs just because we're doing all the other stuff yeah uh to where if you were like an individual drone dude like all yeah. you did was drone and drone stuff yeah uh sometimes it's hard to like keep that going uh but since we're doing all the other stuff as far as boundary and platting and yeah. blah, blah 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 it's just one more line item that gets added yeah you gotta have multiple services to uh, multiple services to keep uh, afloat really uh, rely on the service <laughs> right be that as it may uh one leads the other uh bill swope who actually is the uh he's the head no he's like the head business development geospatial dude at half yeah. and associates and he's also like usually been like the president of aspers which is the uh american society of photogrammetry and remote sensing <laughs> uh for the last couple years he's usually involved somehow some way and so that guy usually knows what's up and uh he kind of <laughs> inspires me with his be the expert speech you know did you go to geo week it was what just last month or something they had the geometry or, or uh, no, I usually, uh, they don't let me too far afield. I have a very short leash in so yeah. far as my productivity and when I'm allowed to not be billing. Yeah. Is yeah. That, uh, but I have been to uh, TopoDot, which is one of our major extraction yep. heard um, softwares. I went to TopoDot uh, User Conference 2021, which was kind of cool because it was 2021 and like nobody was there. I mean, half the people were there. <laughs> so it was really a nice and structured student ratio. Those yeah, of us yeah. great traveling to florida <laughs> during rona yeah and Sid, so, are y'all uh, doing any kind of drone for your company or you know dealing with any kind of stuff like that right now for your survey i know i don't know if you yeah so are you outsourcing the survey and then you handle lidar data uh our company you know we go through with somebody else they've got a one of the surveyors that we use does have a drone and we'll get uh, drone stuff from them every now and then mm -hmm. and it's like you said those are good sized files but mostly you know it's for surfaces and stuff but uh do, do you typically state, create the you know, surface like or you let them do it say again do you typically let them create the surface or you do it yourself uh the last time i got a file from them i had to create the surface myself yeah did you do it through recap or like yeah it works I I did recap. Okay. okay. It wasn't too bad. It, it took a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what do they what do they send you? They send you like a point cloud or a mesh and you you do that? It was a point cloud mm -hmm. they gave us. You know, and it was a most of it was flat uh flat um huge parking lot you know, basically yeah. what i call it so they're at the balloon fiesta park oh, okay. here in albuquerque so usually was... flat ones kind of give me trouble sometimes uh because i can turn on like depending on the cleanness of your data like if it's a photogrammetry set parking lots are going to be pretty clean you know it yeah. is mesh so it depends mm -hmm. on how good they are at it but usually it's pretty clean because it's photogrammetry and it's a hardscape uh lidar man you gotta have a good lidar unit like it's gotta be pretty expensive to be able to do decent like flatlands like hardscape mm -hmm. curb gutter 
uh, that kind of stuff, just because of the noise level. Like, I know what I'm doing with ours. Ours is like a mid-level LiDAR. Well, mid to high level, mm -hmm. but not like highest level. That's for sure. Yeah. I wish I could have a Regal sensor one of these days when Santa, you know, starts dropping quarter million sensors on my sur on the survey company. Yeah. I'm one of those. Uh, uh, last company I was with, we they were just getting into the drone drone surf and they did a project for us down in southern New Mexico um, which had because it's a big drainage area that we were looking at and uh, trying to solve some flooding for the prison out there but the guy who did it all he didn't clean it up we were fighting all the bushes and everything else and then we eventually had to send the surveyors out there to get the curb and gutter because he couldn't get it cleaned up yeah like oh man for if you're doing aerial LIDAR, curb and gutter is tough. That is tough mm -hmm. for aerial LIDAR to pull out. Um, usually, uh, and I say usually, of all the data sets I see, cur mobile mappers, I wish I had mobile mapper data. That's like one millimeter noise level data. Mm -hmm. It's got 4 million points per second that are straight screaming out of these two uh, wow. scanner heads while they're wow. going like 70 miles an hour down the road. Yeah. Uh, now these things are like eight feet from the road and they weigh as much as a boat anchor. <laughs> Whereas, remember, I have this drone LIDAR that's pretty handy, but it can only be maximum like 13 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> and that's everything. Yeah. So you have to recognize that, hey, we can fit a lot more in a boat anchor versus 13 pounds. Uh, yeah. Be that as it may, is the, the aerial LIDAR it gives you like such a complete picture, especially in like raw land. Like if it's raw land, you're okay with at least a 10th. You have to be okay with a 10th. If you're not okay with a 10th and you have to realistically assess whether you want aerial light or being the measurement tool for whatever the hell you're doing. Uh, you know, two tenths all day long. I can mm -hmm. do two tenths all day long. Uh, if you're like inside of one tenth, hey, I'll be honest with you if I can't hit it. Some people won't be. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this one here, you know, it's brand new and they wanted to give it a good, you know, a test run. So the PM said, yeah, go for it. Flew it out there, you know, and it gave us great for the drainage areas we needed to do because it was huge. Yeah. It was, you know, about at least 40 acres, you know, that we needed to catch. And it was good. But when we needed to get to where the flooding was at inside the prison there, yeah, it just wasn't quite enough, but. I think usually some of the tougher ones I've come into is uh, it's, they call it, I guess the buzzword is data fusion, but it's where you have to take everything that's captured from all the other sensors that are in the area, whether it's a terrestrial scanner, uh, an aerial LIDAR set, a photogrammetry set, uh, really GPS, uh, total station. You have to make sure all that crap is in the same coordinate system yeah. somehow, yeah. some way, which usually means is that you don't trust whatever it says. And you have to like sometimes hard verify off of ground control. And for me, that usually means targets. That's the gold standard for me. I know there's like targetless registration, but that's a hope uh, yeah. is, is that throw some targets out there. Like when checkerboards go a long way. Yeah. When you're tying that down, do you have a rule of thumb of how many per acre you're going to tie that down with your property yeah and uh it's almost a joke in survey and the answer is it depends yeah. uh but the reason i say it depends is that okay let's say i'm doing 600 acres uh eh, let's half that for let's say i'm doing 300 acres and for whatever reason it's super wooded yeah. and i can't throw down ground control like i want to like ideally i'd box it out where there's a square and i have one in the middle ish uh, technically, you'd like it on your highest and lowest point, but most of the time, the RTK GPS that's on the drone, that's going to be the controlling thing we're using. Yeah. Unless there's some reason that RTK cannot be had, um, I'll, I will do my darndest to post-process it, yeah. which means, I know I'm getting a little technical here, but that means I'm going to give it a really good GPS fix, mm -hmm. either through the... USGS as core stations or somehow some way. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that that way it really limits your control to where eh, minimum five. I know I'm on a recorded thing here. So super <laughs> minimum, super minimum five. Okay. Uh, probably theoretically, physically one, 
could do it, mm-hmm. uh, but they you would only be using that one to essentially come up to uh, a translation, like an XYZ to whatever yeah. your control is, to where the RTK is the thing that's transforming. I kind of yeah, I use this pantomime with my hand to where, let's see if I can do this, where the RTK is forming the mesh, like mm-hmm. it, it molds it. And then once it decides on that mold, that's mm-hmm. what it is. And then you use your one or three or five or nine ground control stations to perform a best fit yeah. of how that mold is going to go. And that's that's kind of how you can cheat the control problem mm. is let the RTK that's built into all the metadata on the photos do all the mold meshing or the scene mm. solving, if you will, the constraint in scene solving. Technically, if there is a photogrammetrist just watching this later. Um, and then you use your control as just yeah. the thing to kind of move it to where it's got to match. Yeah. Um, what is your typical lifespan of those um, when you're flying your drones in the air? Is it 20 minutes, 30 minutes? Yeah, 30 minutes, like 30 minutes for the photo bird. Eh, I'd probably say for the big black photo bird, which is yeah. what we call the M300 with the P1. Um, that's all day long, 30 minutes. Usually you can get 40 minutes out of it unless it's a windy day or yeah. Um, the, the LiDAR drone. Um, I'm pretty conservative on that guy because it's yeah. super expensive. <laughs> so you don't like to chance it. Um, I'm usually at like 25 minutes on that guy. So it is a pain in the butt. Um, there's better ones out there than the micro drones. It will cost you more, but there are better ones. Well, how long does it take uh, to get a full charge after you, 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 you've killed the battery? Uh, well, again, when you're in the field with all this whiz bang technology, you realize that much like printers or inkjet printers, they're really just devices for batteries. Yeah. And so uh, you, you get like several jug- packs with you. You get you know, juggling batteries. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. So uh, for the LiDAR bird, ours in particular, um, if you have four of the kind of batteries that it uses, that's yeah. a good mix because then you can always have one on hot standby and the rest of them are kind of charging as you're cycling through. Like I've had to go through like 16 batteries in a day. 16, is that the eight, the golf course probably? <laughs> yeah, you just keep 16? going, you know, wow. like you're legally allowed to fly from civil twilight to civil dusk, I guess. <laughs> so, and if you got some light, if you got some night sensors, uh, we don't fly at night. I mean, you yeah. can, but it usually turns into a thing that you're like, freaking people it. out at nighttime. <laughs> and, yeah, it's hard enough to make this I mean, granted, remember, these things are lightweight things. Yeah. Like the LiDAR bird, I joke that it's held together by rubber bands. <laughs> that these are probably expensive rubber bands, but they're still rubber <laughs> bands that keep the top portion of the fuselage attached mm. to the bottom portion. <laughs> so. Hey, Matt, I see, uh, are you still playing around with drones? Yeah, not as much. Not as much? Not as much. <laughs> Real um, work takes the place of uh, playing with the drones. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know if you were still playing since you, you, you still play around with recap, if you were still doing some drone stuff with, with Autodesk. So. Oh, of course. I mean, <laughs> there's, there's, so there's a little elementary school within walking distance and I've, I've flown that a few times pre-construction during construction yeah. and they're, they're wrapping up pretty soon. So I'll, I'll go out there and fly it again and you know, I'll dump all that stuff in my InfraWorks model and yeah. have the, you know, three, different stages if you will of the yeah you know, progress tracking there well, that's cool that's cool and anything they ask Eddie, is that just an ortho photo or something that they're asking for progress tracking or do you have to like model the whole thing up no so just to give you a little context so i work for autodesk so i'm just playing around with this stuff for my uh my own demos and data sets and whatnot and just you know kind of Kind of showing everything that InfraWorks can do, but is I mean, there's a I'm you know, trying to trying to pull up InfraWorks right now, but there's a um, yeah, you get the ortho tiff, you get the mesh file, you get point cloud, you get a, a digital elevation model as well. So a little bit of everything, right? So yeah, yeah. Sure. It's yeah, it's I've only got a chance to play with lidar stuff in InfraWorks like maybe twice, <laughs> so. Um, I, well, the I, like the big one on the block right now is uh, <clears throat> is Tobo Dot, mm-hmm. and so like there's other ones, and you can and but Tobo Dot's just like it's easier. 
Yeah. So like, just use that. Um, I, there's like a bunch of different workflows that it's just easier. Uh, in fact, I have like context capture. That's one that we're using Bentley wise. Um, I'm getting actually kind of not as good at Pix 4D as I probably should be yeah. because we stopped using it a while back. And so like, I know how to make it work, but I'm starting to lose the so, edge on like how to be really good at it. Is it pretty expensive or is it fairly cheap when you are sending that to a third party to handle all the process, all that data and just give you, you know, a surface back or something? Oh, well, uh, most of the time on drone service providers um, is that you kind of get a three tiered system yeah, and uh, that you have the photogrammetry only option. Um, and that's usually your cheapest. And so if you know how to extract stuff, that's not a bad deal because it's usually, it's like ridiculously cheap usually yeah. um, to have them, like you throw them your photos and your control set, and then they send you back a classified point cloud um, and an ortho photo. Mm -hmm. So there's no like 3D mesh model, none of that, no clean surface. Um, but that classified point cloud is that's handy to have uh, to where mm -hmm. if you know what you're doing, you can now make a thing out of that. You don't have to wait. Like, you don't have to wonder whether you put all the settings right in the photogrammetry box. Yeah. But no, it, it came be, back perfect. It'd be nice if, you know, one day some company will go through and create a, a, a website and people can just dump all their survey data, like a, all public open source LIDAR data. Every time a project is completed, you fly a drone and then you put it on this website. And so somebody's doing development next door, they can actually grab that data. <laughs> so that'd be nice. Yeah, it is a timely thing to where, you know, that's usually for us is like, oh, well, who paid for it? You know, that's yeah. the customer's data. And if you, if he says you can have it, knock yourselves out. But something like you, know, you pay us, like, you know, 500 bucks a month. And then so every, you've got this massive database of all over Texas or something. You pick a city and you can see. Well, all I think you'll see a near map type service in the not too distant future be the yeah. LiDAR version of near map. Like I mean, it's the, look, look at, anything that you can see from space. I just yeah. can't imagine that not being commoditized. In the yeah. not too oh yeah, future. near map is getting there. And then, you know, Tenderous, you know, they have the big panels, the two gigabyte panels, but they're like three meters resolution. It's not that good. Uh, <laughs> So uh, it's made like yeah, 100 and, uh, bucks for the whole state of Texas, but it's, it's, it's so big that the, the, the data, so. Well, and that's something that you kind of wish that your tax dollars would pay for yeah. is uh, there's, again, with the boat anchor analogy, is that air breathing planes, the planes that have human beings flying them, yeah. those things can carry boat anchors worth of sensors in them. And those, bo those boat anchors of sensors are, have, you know, latest, greatest, advanced technology in them uh so those boat anchors that are flying those big planes you can fly them at like ten thousand feet no problem and co collect the imagery you need mm -hmm. whereas or or i guess you can fly a dji m300 with a p1 sensor yeah it goes about 30 miles an hour and it, that feels good but it's it's an order of magnitude times probably another order of magnitude yeah yeah more efficient to just have the air breathing guy go photo it all yeah uh and have the like data scientist i remember mm -hmm. i think it's dr abdallah he's like usually the guy that white all, writes all the white papers for wolpert yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so have him register your data he's been doing it for, <laughs> if you don't want your cousin eddie that bought a drone you know <laughs> registering your data you know there's the middle ground that's me yeah uh and then there's you know dr abdallah and wolpert you know yeah. so there, there is a scale that if you have a big enough project just go get an air reading platform to do yeah. it all for you yeah um i was hoping my buddy would jump online he doesn't you know, he's got his own drone company, but it's not really for surveying. It's all everything else outside of construction. So film. Oh, it's the Wild West. Like for, yeah. I think, surveying I mean, he's got like, eventually just boundary. 10, 12, 15 different types of drones, you know, from movie production drones to just simple, you know, personal drones. But he's got a, that's all he does. He flies uh, his drone for different companies, even telephone, um, television channels. Um and I was hoping he'd come on and give, you know, kind of give his input on what he's doing. Um, hey, thanks, Matt. Thanks for joining us. So, yeah, so Matt, no, uh, you see this reality capture stuff, that'll be, you know, that's kind of the word is that it's whether it's drone or terrestrial or yeah. on a plane, train or automobile is that it turned like reality capture network is going to have their 
um, first in-person yeah. uh, conference in Idaho, I think in October. And Oh man, I don't know if I can get up there, but that would be a hot ticket to get up there and see what, uh, who show it'll be vendor thick. That's for sure. But yeah. it would be kind of like an off brand Trimble. Um, oh, I forget what they call it. Trimble has their conference. It's yeah. hein- heinously expensive, but each, uh, I feel like this reality capture network conference will probably be a pretty good uh, conference to go to, to see like what the people that don't have survey licenses are doing. And I bet it's pretty fan fantastic. Uh, did you, I don't know if you get on LinkedIn that much. I have a friend, um, a buddy that I kind of follow. He's always posting on LinkedIn like myself. Um, he does his own little conference called the RCN, the reality capture network. What I just said. Reality oh, I thought I said conference. That. Okay. Well, Real- reality capture network conference, I guess. I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I didn't know if it was the same, the same thing. Yeah, when I'm when I was looking at that, I'm like, oh yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, like yeah. That, that guy knows what he I mean. Now there is the pirate digital twinning. Like there's guys like Barry Bassnet that I follow. That yeah. there's they've been around forever. So if that guy tells you that you should probably try something with 32 both like 32 bit photogrammetry, you probably should. I invited him to the. Uh, he's going to try to do a, a webinar for the user group. Um, so, and I invited him to come to Texas for my next training event. Uh, he said he he uh, he's, that? If he's available. Um, um, uh, the reality Matthew, capture Matthew Matthew Bryant, you know the guy who runs that network. Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, hey man, I'm gonna drop off. Yeah, it was good yeah, wrapping with you. I'm glad that you invited me. I had to like kind of figure it out a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, so well, I was going to do this laptop, yeah. but I guess we'll yeah. do it phone. Most people are using the uh, the MeWe platform to just use the MeWe app, uh, just the mobile app. That's what most of us use, and uh, where we get notifications for live webinars and posts. So, for sure, well, cool man. And I watch your channel. If I'm only the thirtieth view, at least I'm watching. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'll see you, man. Bye. All right, later. Yeah. Later. Yeah. Um, but no, he's pretty good, man. I, he's actually one of my clients. Um, okay so uh, i do i built some of their templates for them i was working on their templates and stuff a little bit of training um so uh, i've been learning a little bit from them based on what they're doing with drones and stuff so it's been kind of educational for me you know him explaining how they're doing their drone and their workflow and stuff like that so um but uh the survey survey company that we've been using you know they got us uh, initial for a couple projects to start yeah just remember that uh one Big old pond or uh, pond that I designed and stuff. They went and used the the drone to fly it after it was built. Yeah, you know, I was going to do earthwork quantities off of it and stuff. And oh yeah, pretty, yeah. Pretty, came out with a sweet surface, you know. That you know, instead of going out there and shooting it, yeah, they flew that and then they uh, also did a great video for us that we could use on our website. Oh, okay. Of the the pond and everything else, it came out really cool. So, you know, I like it. I just, so the, the issue I had on that first one was that the guy, when he was cleaning it up, was the trees, the shrubs and bushes. He wasn't taking those out. Yeah. And then you spent a lot of time trying to do the cleanup. <laughs> so, yeah, he, he had, to, he wouldn't let anybody do it but himself. So, yeah. And then the next problem is that at some point when you have a property that has a lot of trees, you have to do a tree yeah. survey. So the drone can't do the tree survey. So you've got to shoot the trees. So to right. get the diameter of a tree and stuff. So now you're doing conventional survey and drone at the same time, you know, um, yeah. because I have to identify the specimen of trees, the size of the tree, if it's two trunks, one trunk, you know, so the guys still have to go out there, you know? <laughs> yep. Um, oh, yeah. Well, they had talked about using a drone to do the jetty jacks. I don't know if you know what those are. Uh-uh, what is that? It's like a, like you know, like a jack, you know, like the kids play with. Yeah. It's something like that it was made out of rebar that they stuck in the river and tied them together with cables to help control the flooding back in the 40s and 50s and stuff yeah. huh. here along the Rio Grande. And well, now that, you know, we got all the dams built and the channels and everything else, those are more of a hazard whenever that place gets caught, catches fire, you know, yeah. it gets so dry. So they wanted to survey all of those and they thought about doing that, but they figured, yeah, they can't get in there because of the trees. And on some of them are submerged, yeah. and you know, so they had to do them manually. And they were like, like fifteen thousand of those things just in the Albuquerque area. Dang! But they had to go in and survey each one. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, I just had somebody. They had to go survey a property, 
it was a forest. I mean, a dense forest, and we needed the trees to identify which trees we could remove based on size. Um, yeah, and it took him a while. It took him a while. He, I can tell, he wasn't happy about it because he had to go back in there and survey every single tree. Um, but uh, yeah, it's. Um, yeah, the it's, one kid it's he got to be a saturated lucky. market because you just see drones everywhere now with survey companies doing personal stuff, and you don't know who who's doing a good job, who really knows what they're doing, you know. Um, yeah. So. Well, this uh, I can't trying to remember if it was Surf Tech. I think it's Surf Tech over here that's doing the drone, and it, the the point cloud was pretty clean. It was pretty nice, and they had to classify it, so I was able to to kill some stuff that I didn't want to show. Mm-hmm. And on the surface was pretty tight, so yeah. you know it worked out pretty good. And then the finished one on that pond was really nice too. You know they yeah. did a good job on that one. And hmm. but like you know like hardscape, that's the thing. You know if you got curb and gutter, that's kind of kind of tough to pick up unless yeah you know, they're shooting ten million points and along it. You know yeah yeah yeah. Um. So what else we've we been dealing with? Um, Matterport has been popular right now for internal buildings, doing the scans and stuff. And now I see that everywhere with residential, like home builders, um, you know, developers, yeah. and they're doing the Matterport now, or even commercial buildings, they'll do the scan and then they'll show it for, especially during COVID, everybody was doing Matterport. You know, they would scan the office and, hey, you want to rent an office? And they'll scan it to show people and they can walk around um, through the commercial building, stuff like that. So, um, I think they were using, you know, there's different technology for, but I think they were using that with that the Leica Black 360 or something to reduce some of that uh, Matterport uh, 3D models, yeah, uh, 3D scans. I got um, to see a presentation a few years back that they were doing uh, for Sandia Labs mm-hmm. and stuff that they're doing to for their. Um, Oh, I can't think of the term right now. You know, all of what all the equipment that were in the room and everything yeah. else like that. And I had a good picture of it and everything else and yeah. how they produce it. That was pretty sweet. Yeah, hmm. that, yeah that was great. a lot of points too, though. Oh yeah, oh yeah, um, yeah. So my friend, my other friend, he's got a kind of a MEP Rabbit company. And they they do a lot of Matterport stuff. Um, so. Um, Pretty cool because I got friends in different little industries. They're like little small business owners, a drone guy, the survey guy, the rabbit MEP guy, the architect who's got, I got an architect. He's got his own architectural company. So I do business with him, you know, so got little business owners. We all kind of share clients. So, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Now you got your little network, you know, the network going there and stuff like that. And- yeah, it, it does help, you know, and, and, and I keep meeting up new people on LinkedIn um so uh but yeah um that's why i use you know you know yours all the time you know it's great because we got people all across the country that we can connect with and that's why yep. i always try to throw a question out there or something and try yeah. to help out to get i like it because away. you've got an area that you can go back and arch- uh look at some of the archives the videos the posts and stuff like that um it's just um and you got a video library, so if you go to the photos and video section, you can go look at all that stuff. Um, it, it is very similar to if you remember Google uh, Google Plus communities. Yeah, that's why I picked it because it's very similar. Google Plus can you, you can do video, you can do posts, you can do group chats, you can do all that. Um, so the other ones, there's a lot of messengers and stuff, but it doesn't work as properly as this, like Slack and Discord and stuff like that. Some of them are just strictly video. Some of them are strictly chat. You can't really write blogs and stuff on there. It's just a messenger. So, um, and that's kind of why I like the the MeWe. Now, the only thing I don't like is, uh, or I wish they would have is a uh, live streaming where I can post new live streaming uh, videos. But, you know, there's so many free ones out there. I already have Zoom. I, you know, I can do uh, Google Chat. Um, some other things like that, but it'd be nice if they had a live streaming. So, um, and I'm always trying to promote the, the plat, not, not the platform, but the actual, uh, maybe platform, getting more and more people on there because I'm posting constantly on the public sector to get stuff rolling in there so people can see that's not, you know, Autodesk or in, you know, energy, um, topics, you know, um, sorry, um, industry topics and stuff like that. So, 
but it's still slowly growing. I mean, we just added three more members today. So um, yeah. I think the point is just getting people, I have to tell people, download the app. Because if you don't, you'll forget to come back to the browser. You'll always forget to come back to the browser. Most of them forget. You know, they don't yeah. save the, the website. And then, you know, they, they don't remember to come back and, you know, network. So that's yeah. why most of them that are the most active are actually mobile users. <laughs> so, yeah. And I'm doing both. You know, both. Yeah, I do. I have yeah. it on my phone, but I also have it saved on here. So, um, yeah, because there's times I'll answer questions on my phone, you know, because like, I'll be at here at the house or where yeah. <laughs> I mean, on the weekends, you know, I'll put something up. But um, yeah, one of the guys at work, I was showing him the, the site today and everything else. So I'm trying to get him to join up. Yeah, get people to join mm -hmm. up and stuff like that. The more people we have, the, the more fun it is, you know, more active users. Um, so, um, and I message people all the time on our platform that just don't respond or not online no more. <laughs> yeah. So, um, well, I was looking at some of the members on your, on, on your, your page there. Yeah. And there's people that, I know from Albuquerque, but they're never on or. Oh, you know, really? Have never, yeah. You should mention the, hey, we're on chat. Come, come, come out with us or something. And, uh, um, yeah, there's folks there's... from, you know, former companies that are on there and stuff. Oh, but yeah. I don't even know when's the last time they've been on. Or even yeah, if they you should email or message them from LinkedIn or something. Sometimes I'll go back and, re and remind some of the members, hey, and they go, oh, yeah, I forgot. You know, I was like, no, you got to download the mobile app because you will forget. Um, yeah. so, uh, but, uh, we have a few out of this people, but they don't, they don't try to interact, you know, they want to just watch to see what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. um, and then we have probably eight expert elite members out of this expert elite members. Um, let's see here. And yeah. Some, some of the folks I see are IT folks and yeah. other CAD users and stuff. So we got a mixture of people in here. I mean, we have some people from Canada. There are people from uh, the UK and other countries in here. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to my best to get, trying to keep some of the current members here active, like that hasn't participated in months. So yeah. I'll message them, you know, I'll message them on LinkedIn. Say, hey man, we're, you're missing out on some fun. Um, but uh, I mean, that's, at least it's still growing. Um, and, uh, you know, the hard part for me is identifying which one's a fake account that tries to join. I, like the last two weeks, I've been getting a lot of fake members trying to join. So I'll mm. try to Google them, who they are, if it comes up on different feeds like Twitter or Instagram or LinkedIn. And I've had several that were really fake. I could tell they were fake accounts. Um, so yeah. like, nothing comes up on any social media platform. I don't add them because I know that's a fake one then, you know, um, and then, uh, most of them that I, if I see them on LinkedIn, I'll add them because I could, you know, I can identify that stem. So, um, like there's three of them right now. I can tell they're fake accounts, um, that come through. So that's why I make it private. If I did, I would, we would be filled with junk members. Oh and yeah. I could imagine. Posting yeah. all kinds of, you know, stuff. So, um, yeah. And then I think I have a hundred and something members trying to be, trying to be, or trying to be contacts, 100 people trying to be a contacts. So I don't add contacts outside the user group, even though I could. I can just be like Twitter, you know, add contacts and stuff like that and followers. Um, but I don't, want, I don't want to do all that. I don't want to mix all that with on me. We I can do it on Twitter or Instagram or wherever mm -hmm. else, Facebook or something. But here, yeah, there's how many members requesting? I think it was. Yeah, no, you know, there's. I think the, you know, the active people that we got now have been pretty yep. cool. And then, you know, it's given more like Donna and Chris, you know, they're starting to kind of get some rabbit people in here now. So Donna's new, um, and you know, there she's a guru. She's an expert elite. And then, um, Rena is also new. She's an expert elite rabbit, you know, so I'm trying to get rabbit, rabbit people in here. So, and then next one, I'm trying to get some survey people. So, hmm? and, um, you know, you've been talking about Innovise yep. and, uh, uh, Denver office is getting quotes and stuff like that because they want to use it up there. Yeah. And stuff. So I was talking to the IT guy about it today and stuff. So I'm going to try to figure out, you know, I'm trying to push it to our, our RGIS folks that are doing a lot of the drainage studies and stuff. Try to look into that and use that right yeah. now. 
Yeah, so, I'm kind know. of curious if they're going to totally remove SSA and Hydroflow Express tools, storm sewers, and replace it with Innovise. I'm kind of curious what's going to happen there because now you got all these hydraulic, different little hydraulic tools. So, mm -hmm. um, should be interesting. I mean, you just spend. A, I mean, if I spend a billion dollars, yeah, I'm going to remove all that older hydraulic software, you know. But yeah. then you're going to piss off all the current customers that are using it, you know. So, yeah, you know, we don't use it very much, you know, because they're using, you know, the ArcGIS, Arc Pro, and all that to do the drain work, and and also I thought the Innovise stuff would be better, yeah. you know, to marry up with that stuff. I use a Hydro, Hydro, Hydroflow Express weekly for my projects. So I'll do them okay. simple analysis for weirs, storm design, culverts, swells, analysis yeah. and stuff. And then, but I use my spreadsheets for hydraulic because I don't like the way SSA does some of their formula. So yeah, um, yeah right now we're doing a lot of big area studies and stuff, you know, yeah. where you got the water coming off a 10,000 foot mountain coming into the valley. <laughs> So yeah, you know, our areas are huge. Yeah, I imagine. I imagine. So, so you know, our our pro works pretty good for that and stuff. Yep. And then whatever little modeling they do with it and stuff, yep. you know, areas. So uh changing the subject, um, um we're about we're working on a new update. You saw that the new app we released, right? The street app. Actually, I did not get a chance to look at that. I saw oh, that yeah. it came out, I wanted to watch it, but uh, yeah, the last so, three weeks, man, between training new people yeah. and interns and filling in, you know, taking over projects for the yeah. engineers that left, you know, I've been slammed. Oh, imagine if you got engineers leaving, then you're just going to get more and more swamped, you know? So Yeah. Um, so I'm just trying to stay up and keep my head above water. I'm going to take a vacation. I got to take some time off before I, I go I'm crazy. taking a vacation for Labor Day weekend, so... Um, but no, we are we release an app that allows you to select all those center lines on your subdivision, just mm -hmm. supply lines. You know, you got a site plan that you did it, you know, at the very beginning. We can convert all those center lines into alignments and then create the profiles for all of them at one time. And you can break them up by maximum station based on your sheet size. So yeah. your maximum profile length is a thousand foot or nine hundred foot or something. It now creates nine hundred foot profiles for that street for every single street. Um, Sweet. So, um, but somebody made a comment like, "Well, we like the plant production tool because it does that already." I said, well, "Yeah, but it only does one street. Ours will subdivide it all up for you at one time." Um, but I can see their point. They're still going to say, well, you still got to go line them up, you know, because you got to create all your views for each profile. I'm like, okay, so we're creating an app right now. Um, a programmer is working on it where it's going to take all your alignments. It's kind of like the plant production tool, but imagine yeah. doing a plant production tool for all your alignments at one time. That'd so, be cool. And, you know, you, you typically when you, you, you create a, pro, uh, a profile for your uh, alignment, you got to go design, you know, do your design, right? Do your high yep. points, low points. Well, our app is already doing that right now. It already knows high points, low points based on existing. So it already creates a design profile for you. And then you can just pick up from there. You can actually start designing, modifying it. Um, so oh, really? Yeah, it does in every one of the alignments one time. So, and oh. uh, so now imagine, I mean, this is really good. We probably have to raise our rate because if I am selecting an alignment and converting that into multiple profiles and creating the sheets for you, I'm actually doing plant production sheets for every single alignment within one minute, I got to charge more because I just cut down hours until like a one minute. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Yeah, because now all you're doing is going back and tweaking and you know modifying the design profile, you know, changing the curve, the curve length. And right now we're doing default of 100 foot, uh, but you know, uh, we'll do a default uh, design speed of 30 miles per hour. But you know how long it takes to create a profile, draw in the, the high points, low points for your design profile in every single street. But now mm -hmm. it's doing it for you. And don't go back and now creating your sheets for you. We're going to create all the sheets for you too at the same time. <laughs> so now are those sheets uh, going to be data shortcutted or are they going to be an X ref? Be an X ref. No data shortcuts to cut down on. Um, all this uh, sinking, you know, 
So it's just going to XREF that sheet into uh, your plan sheet, plan besides data shortcuts. Because data shortcuts is just slowing your drawing up when you open it up. It's just syncing so much information. You got to bring in all that profile styles, label styles into the sheet when I can just attach it as an XREF. You know, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's that's uh, that's where we're currently working on right now. Because like, okay, guys, they might be a separate app. We may have to create it into a separate app out of the suite because that's a huge time saver. Yeah, time saver. Um, because I literally just cut down probably majority of your design time on a subdivision, like thirty three percent. I probably just saved you thirty three percent of your design time by creating the sheets, creating the alignments, creating the design profile within one dialog box in one minute. <laughs> So, um, yeah, that'd be, that'd be cool. That'd be sweet. Uh, I mean, that's going to be a huge game changer. So I'm going to test it on three subdivisions and I'm currently working on once my program is done with it. So, all right, dude, I don't want to keep any longer, but thanks for joining, man. I appreciate oh, yeah. it. I'll uh, put this on the YouTube channel. Okay. Yeah. No problem. I, I enjoyed it. And yeah. it was like, I knew it was coming up and then I got here right away. Oh yeah. Boom. Let's go. <laughs> You know, so right. yeah, I just barely walked in the door a few minutes yeah. earlier and stuff. So, and mama just sat down and plate dinner, so I gotta go anyway. <laughs> All right, dude. All right, talk All to right. you later. Take care now. Bye bye.